Welcome, we are continuing from where we left off in the previous lecture. We are looking at some of the applications of uh, transport phenomena, transport processes and biological systems even to cutting edge research. Okay. We have looked at a lot of applications of uh, industry related aspects and so on and so forth right through the course. In fact, they were used to even introduce material and so on and so forth. So, in a sense the um, tutorial aspect of it, the practice aspect of it was integrated with the learning part of the course. It was not separated out into just information and then practice. The practice was a part of the initial exposure itself. Okay. So, that is the way uh, the course is designed. Uh, however, I, uh, I feel that uh, it, it is good to know some of the applications. It will give you the scope, the wide scope of the applicability of it. I am going to start, uh, rather I did start um, in the previous class with an application that we did uh, or application of transport phenomena to research uh, that was made about 26 years ago, right? about 25, 26 years ago. In fact, one of the first proposal that got funded uh, for in, uh, when I began my uh, career as a faculty member in IIT Bombay was based on this and the paper that came out of it was what is discussed. I thought I will start there, give you a gist of what we talked about in the previous class and then look at other applications. Okay. The What we looked at was the transport of oxygen from an air bubble to a cell. The air bubble is in the air bubble contains the gas, so it is gas phase. Cell is some sort of a semi liquid, semi solid, so it can be considered as a separate phase. And uh, the oxygen from the air bubble traverses to the cell through various resistances. Okay. There is transport of oxygen, so transport phenomena. And uh, we also said that um, if you plot the concentration of oxygen on let us say a vertical axis corresponding to this distance on the horizontal axis, immediately after the gas liquid interface, there is a region where the oxygen concentration drops significantly and then it kind of flattens out and then there is another, re another region here. Okay. We are going to focus or we did focus on this region which we said was the conceptual gas liquid film. There is no physical film there, it is just the region where the concentration decreases. So, this film can be viewed as posing a resistance to the transport of oxygen from the gas phase to the liquid phase and ultimately to the cell. So, this is one of uh, this is a way or um, uh, for the analysis this is uh, for this analysis this is the way of looking at the transport of oxygen and there are two fundamental limitations in this process and that is the reason why oxygen supply at relevant rates to the bioreactor is a big challenge was a big challenge it is still a big challenge till you accept various things. So, the high film resistances uh, you know here as well as here this happens to be the biggest resistance when you, you consider single cells and so on and so forth okay, the gas liquid film resistance. Uh, thereby you cannot supply it at rates that are necessary for the uh, cellular culture as well as you cannot store oxygen. Okay. The uh, solubility of oxygen is low it is about 8 ppm rule of thumb at uh, typical conditions and therefore, we are limited from a thermodynamic angle as well as a kinetic angle. As a result, there is not enough oxygen inside the cell and our thinking was if we can get rid of the gas liquid film resistance, then we completely obviate the difficulty that is posed by the film and as long as there is a gas and a liquid as there is, uh, as long as there are two phases it is physical reality that there will be a conceptual film. Okay. So, the only way to get rid of the gas liquid film resistance is by not having 
the gas layer a lot at all uh, because the cells are in the liquid phase gas phase at all and use a liquid phase reaction to generate oxygen and that is what we called as the liquid phase oxygen supply strategy. The liquid phase reaction was the catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide added hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen these are the clean green products that uh, arise as a result of this catalytic decomposition and all aerobes are known to have catalase. So, that is the reason why we went into this and generalized the strategy. Then I told you about the performance here percentage air saturation of DO versus time. When uh, we looked at a xanthan gum cultivation, the conventional cultivation took the DO to 0 in about 6 and a half hours, whereas the LPOS maintained DO above the set point of 50 percent throughout the fermentation and that resulted in better yields. There was a 70 percent increase in the volumetric productivity of xanthan gum. Not just that we have applied this uh, strategy to very many different cultivations. Uh, for example, uh, we have shown up to a 2.4 fold increase in uh, highly uh, commercial enzymes uh, from a uh, mold source A Niger, Aspergillus Niger okay, and so on so forth. We have done, uh, we have tested this with many different aerobic systems and it has worked well. Microbial systems, it has worked very well. So, this I think is where we uh, stopped last time, this is just a summary of what we saw last time. It is nice to begin with this summary, it provides a certain continuity to the story, that is the reason I, why I began with this. Okay. Now, let me get to the next aspect of it which is rather interesting, the, the initial part is transport. There is some transport in the mechanistic aspects also, I would let you figure out um, what the transport aspects are. Uh, but the mechanism was uh, completely surprising to us. Okay. Whatever we started out, whatever assumptions we started out completely went out of the window when we started uh, investigating the mechanism by which the oxygen becomes available. So, let me present that next in this uh, class. Let us take one by one slowly, so that we have enough time to internalize and so on and so forth. Okay. So, let us discuss this paper today, mechanism of oxygen availability from hydrogen peroxide to aerobic cultures of xanthomonas campestris. Okay. This was published again in biotechnology, bioengineering, uh, highly reputed, uh, the most reputed journal in our field of biological engineering and um, do not worry about the abstract this time, it is highly focused. So, I let, let me read some parts of the introduction that will give you an idea. And then I will tell you how this is indeed happening and kind of uh, summarize it with a couple of slides at the end. Okay. I thought that would be a nice way of understanding this. Let me read. Oxygen is a necessary nutrient in aerobic bioreactors and insufficient oxygen supply is associated with low productivities, this is known and products of low quality. Efficient oxygen supply is difficult due to low oxygen solubility and high gas liquid mass transfer resistance. Earlier, we had proposed and demonstrated a methodology of oxygen supply to xanthomonas campestris cultivation, which is viscous as well as viscous and aerobic, of course, which excuse me overcomes the gas liquid mass transfer resistance for oxygen supply. It uses the liquid phase decomposition by culture catalase ubiquitous in aerobic cells of periodically fed hydrogen peroxide. The objective of the present work this paper is to understand the mechanism of oxygen availability due to hydrogen peroxide decomposition by xanthomonas campestris and to develop a kinetic model for this same. Okay, we will not worry too much about the kinetic model in this discussion but I will talk to you about the previous one. An understanding of the mechanism of oxygen availability will contribute toward the optimization of the hydrogen peroxide based oxygen supply methodology 
to cultivations of Xanthomonas campestris and other aerobic organisms. Further, the mechanism will also dictate the interpretation of DO values and oxygen uptake rates as clarified later. Okay. This is highly interesting. We just wait for it towards the end of this lecture. Also studies on the kinetics of hydrogen peroxide decomposition by living cells in the range of concentrations employed has not been reported in the literature and so on and so forth. In this paper, we demonstrate that the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide by the cell is intracellular. Okay. That is the key here. Okay. Earlier, we thought that we were uh, adding hydrogen peroxide, the cells have catalysts. And our wishful thinking was that the cells will somehow sense catalysts by we do not know how uh, or we do not <laughs> know how, we still do not know how. Uh, it will somehow sense the hydrogen peroxide outside, then it will somehow put out catalysts, the catalysts will break hydrogen peroxide down and take in the oxygen. Okay. Remember, this picture was completely consistent with the data that we were getting. Okay. Only that picture turned out to be entirely wrong. The data is still fine, it can very well be explained by whatever I am going to tell you now. The picture was completely wrong. It did not matter there. Uh, however, if you need to take things further, it will be in, uh, it will become important. Okay. And there are a lot of transport aspects here, uh, you need to pay attention. Okay. Look at how we are applying transport to cellular aspects at a fundamental level to be able to, uh, at a reasonably fundamental level to be able to generalize various aspects. Okay. That is the um, appreciation I would like you to have. Okay. Uh, is intracellular and also deduce that within the cell the decomposition occurs most probably in the periplasmic space. In addition, it is shown that the entry of hydrogen peroxide flux into the cell uh, comes here comes flux into the cell is controlled by the cell. A mathematical model based on the postulate that the regulation of hydrogen peroxide flux into the cell is controlled by proton motor force predicts the experimental data accurately. We will not talk much about this model in this lecture. F further, we have experimentally confirmed th that the regulation of H2O2 flux into the cell is coupled to the proton motor force. Okay. All this has been shown. However, let me just point out a few things here. This type of experiments, yeah. A location of catalytic action. Um, the discussion would be a little beyond the scope of this uh, course and therefore, let me not get into the discussion. In other words, I will have to give you a lot of background to get you up to speed here. I let you people who are interested can go and read this paper. Uh, let me see which aspects and information on the lo location whether it is intracellular or extracellular of the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide added externally to the cell suspension has not been reported of course. And this was way back in uh, 2000 something. Uh, thus far, okay. this information is particularly significant to the development of a model for the decomposition of external hydrogen peroxide by the cells. Further, the interpretation of DO values will depend on the decomposition location. Uh, then we discuss something about lit what comes from the literature data, then we discuss our experiment, a very carefully thought out experiment and what we have plotted here are the, uh, are the oxygen evolution rates versus time and we also looked at uh, NADH fluorescence which is called culture fluorescence. Okay. Let me read the uh, headings to you that might, that might be helpful. This was the Okay. Location of catalytic action was 1, oxygen efflux from periplasm to extracellular space when hydrogen peroxide is used as an oxygen source. Okay. So, there is something about hydrogen peroxide coming in getting broken down here and then going out. Okay. We have shown all those things, we have proved all those things to happen. Um, what would be under the scope of this? Oxygen uptake rates when hydrogen peroxide is used as an oxygen source. So this is where we get into rates and so on. Then the model which I said I will not get into in this particular lecture and the coupling to the delta G and so on and so forth, the flux values are also given there. See here, 
the flux coming in right and then experimental verification of, of the role of the proton motor force in hydrogen peroxide flux control and so on and so forth. I think um, a little beyond the scope of this particular course. So, let me summarize whatever I have said in easy terms. Okay. If I get into this, it is a lot of detail. Yes, it is complete. It, it gives you, I mean the questions that will arise in your mind as I give you a gist will get answered by this. So, people who have such questions are uh, directed to this paper first and if you do not understand it here, you can always uh, raise queries raise comments on or uh, you know add comments onto the forum I will certainly answer them okay. discussion forum that is. Okay. Let us get back to our presentation here which will summarize whatever I have just mentioned. Okay. This paper addressed the mechanism of the liquid phase oxygen supply strategy. So, the basic question was this the hydrogen peroxide is added extracellularly in the extracellular space. Okay this is uh, an idealized representation of a cell some oval here. This is the extracellular space given as E, this is the intracellular space given as I, this is the periplasmic space you all know this we are all biological people we have done enough biology to know that this exists. Okay. What led me to start investigating this is uh, the realization as usual as it uh, I mean came when I was uh, taking a shower one, one of those days at that time is that hydrogen peroxide is a small uncharged molecule. Okay. So, if you are adding hydrogen peroxide here, there is nothing that prevents it from getting into the cell, it is small uncharged, okay. it is going to go into the cell through the membrane at reasonable rates. Okay. And if catalase is localized in the cell, why cannot the decomposition itself be happening inside the cell? was something that struck me and that is the reason why we started investigating this. Okay. And we the question was whether the hydrogen peroxide added extra extracellularly is broken down in the intracellular space or in the intracell or sorry extracellular space or in the intracellular space or more specifically in the periplasmic space. So, we did uh, experiments um, with medium that contains cells with medium that does not contain cells and look at the huge difference in oxygen evolution rates. Okay. And of course, the cells were exposed to hydrogen peroxide before the experiment and so on. So, I am not getting into the experiment, but this was uh, necessary for a certain base uh, comparison here. Uh, so, there is a huge difference in the oxygen evolution rates and then further uh, discussion NADH fluorescence uh, investigations and so on and so forth led us to the conclusion that hydrogen peroxide decomposition is predominantly intracellular. Okay. Okay, that was what came out with cell controls flux, a flux uh, the oxygen is coming out, energetic studies, uh, studies on flux. NADH dynamics, mathematical model and so on and so forth. These are published actually as couple of papers and the picture is something like this. Oxygen enters the cell, it gets broken down hope, uh, most likely in the periplasmic space of Xanthomonas campestris. Okay, we did investigations only with that. The cell takes in whatever oxygen it requires and by some mechanism it pushes out the rest. Okay. And the DO increases due to the oxygen that is coming out of the cell in excess of whatever has been consumed by the cell. So, the need of oxygen by the cell is completely met and whatever is not needed is actually what we are measuring as DO. Okay. So, the interpretation of DO also needs to change in this case. Earlier, the oxygen was provided in the liquid and then uh, I mean the gas then liquid and then it went into the cell and so on and so forth. So, the uh, DO or the dissolved oxygen level directly gave us a measure of the uh, ability or um, the possibility of oxygen going into the cell, the level of aeration that can happen and so on and so forth. Here it is just the reverse, okay. whatever is coming out of the cell is being measured. Okay. 
So, all these very interesting things came out of this study. So, oxygen is made available to the cells at the place of need inside the cell. Let me see what I have here. Yeah. Uh, and then whatever is not needed is coming out and that is what we are actually measuring. Okay. So, let us uh, we can have short classes. No, it is actually quite long. Um, for each paper, we will discuss a few papers so that we get an idea as to uh, the scope or the wide scope of the applicability of the principles. Okay. Right from the idea to overcome one of the fundamental challenges to understanding the mechanism, let us see what comes next. See you in the next class. Bye.